now I, I can use the, uh, my uh, microphone because they told me that it was on before. But it, uh, the reason was because we wanted to welcome you, Grace and Peter. And also, I would like to welcome all of you here to this beautiful church. We made sure that you would have uh, some uh, sunshine uh, uh, this afternoon uh, because uh, no rain, no nothing, just uh, to be with you. And let us begin as we usually do in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Let us prepare ourselves for this Mass by asking God's forgiveness on our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father in heaven. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who with untold mercy were pleased uh, to choose as an apostle, St. Matthew, the tax collector, grant that sustained by his example and intercession, grace and Peter may marry to hold firm in following you. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Please be seated for the readings. The first reading. A reading from the book of Genesis. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God looked at everything he had made and found it very good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Second reading, taken from the New Testament. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts, but I shall show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in human and angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am a resounding gong or a clashing cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have all faith so that to move mountains, but I do not have love, I am nothing. 
If I give away everything I own, and if I hand my body over so that I may boast but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not jealous, it is not pompous, it is not inflated, it is not rude, it does not seek its own interests, it is not quick-tempered, it does not brood over injury, it does not rejoice over wrongdoing but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the Alleluia. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, you are the salt of the earth, but if salt uh, loses its taste, with what uh, can uh, be seasoned? It is no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. Nor do they light a, a lamp and then put it under a bushel basket. It is set on a lamp stand here to give light to all in the house, just so. Your light must shine before others so that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Grace, I, I you know, for some time here, we, we thought that you had forgotten about the, the address of the church. <laughs> I, 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 I said to myself, well, I know that Peter is so anxious, you know, but to me, you seem more anxious when I saw you. <laughs> so I, I had no doubt that you would be here. You know, all of us were waiting. And then I said, I thought it was four o'clock, you know, and I said, it, and I guess this, this, whatever, they gave me something that uh, makes me, uh, to be known all over, you know, that's part of, uh, that's what I, especially now because they hook me up. Every time I'm uh, on television, they tell me, oh, my senior, now we have to hook you up. And that's what they did. I, uh, I, I'm so happy and thrilled because I am here this afternoon. As you do know, we have so many things coming up, but uh, the, the, the Holy See mission, uh, the United Nations, because, uh, we have uh, the, the General Assembly with 146 heads of state coming, but to me, that's more important to be here. So I, I, know, I know because uh, 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 Peter, Grace, I hope you don't mind, but I have to tell you that Peter was with me so many times because he used to serve weddings. You know, he was an altar server. And then uh, I, uh, I was younger at the time, but still 47 years old. But I feel, I feel that the Lord wanted me here today simply because today is the feast of Saint Matthew. And this is why I wanted to uh, proclaim that gospel this afternoon. I know I have to do it quickly because then we have the 5.30 mass. But let me tell you something so important. <laughs> this is so important to me I called you, Grace. I called you, Peter. 
it's incredible. Probably I made a mistake because I said, uh, you are the salt of the earth. The earth? Uh, yes, because the earth will not be the same after this special ceremony. You are the light of the world. I didn't say uh, Manhattan. I didn't say in any other place in the state of New York. I said it of the world. You are the light of the world. Namely, whatever is going to happen in the world will have uh, those rippling effect that you, your presence here, will have in the world. In the world, the earth, the earth will not be the same. I remember, you know, when I was uh, I was assistant uh, to some of you. You are too young to remember. There was a, a great star on television. His name was Bishop Fulton J. Sheen. I was his assistant, lived with him for five years. And I remember one day we were at lunch and we were discussing. He said, I have another of the 72 bestsellers that I am trying to find uh, a title for this book. I want to write a marriage. A marriage. I said, so, you know, when you're young, you know, you always try to kind of suggest all kinds of uh, uh, titles. He said, no, you know what, I'm going, and it became a reality. One of his bestsellers was three to get married. I said, Bishop, it can't be, it's only two who get married. He said, no, in a Christian marriage, there is always a third person. So when you went through those doors, this afternoon, you have invited someone else to be in your life. That someone else is a special name, Jesus Christ. He will be with you. Beautiful moments in your life, and I am sure that there will be so many. Well, he will be there with you. Then, uh, I, I do believe that even uh, when uh, you will have difficult moments, he will be there at all times since he is God, the, the second person of the Blessed Trinity. And I'm so happy that you have chosen a mass to be married. I don't know, it's kind of uh, simple to be a ceremony, you know, kind of uh, short, whatever, and then we go and eat, you know, but a mass is so essential. We have uh, the readings done so beautifully by the lectors this afternoon, and then we have uh, the three most important parts of the Mass. You have the offertory, the consecration, the communion. The offertory was uh, in a place called uh, the Catholic University of America. These two guys, you know, they met for the first time. You know, and I, I'm, I'm sure. Grace, do you, you remember the, that day? You better. All right, you know. And, and Peter, I'm sure that went home and didn't say anything to his parents. You know where they are, you know. Uh, uh, and, and, and that was the offertory, the beginning. Mm -hmm. Today is the consecration. Communion means common union. That is your mass tonight, this afternoon. Something that will remain and will make the difference in the history of the world. The history of the world will not be the same simply because this afternoon, with your friends, your relatives, you're here to ask the special blessing of the Lord. And I'm here to give it to you. Please stand. May I have uh, the, the witnesses, the two witnesses to come up? Dearly beloved, you have come together into the house of the church so that in the presence of the church's minister and this community, your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with a sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love uh, that binds you through a special sacrament. He enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated by holy baptism that they may be faithful to each other forever and assume all the responsibilities of married life 
And so in the presence of the church's community, I ask you to state your intentions. Grace and Peter, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? Can you hear me? Well, you better. I have. I have. Are you prepared as you follow the path of marriage to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live? I am. I am. Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and to bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church? I am. I am. Since it is your intention to enter into holy matrimony, join your right hands and declare your consent before God and his church. I. I. Peter. Peter. Take you, Grace. Take you, Grace. To be my wife. To be my wife. I promise to be true to you. I promise to be true to you. In good times and in, in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. I will love you. I will love you. And honor you. And honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. I grace. I grace. Take you, Peter. Take you, Peter. To be my husband. To be my husband. I promise to be true to you. I promise to be true to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. I will love you. I will love you. And honor you. And honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. It's all right. Don't worry about it. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. Come on. May the Lord, in his kindness, strengthen the consent you have declared before the church and graciously bring to fulfillment his blessing within you. What God has joined, let no man divide. And now I'm going to ask John uh, he usually, the best man always tries to keep uh, the rings for himself. You never know. I am going to bless these rings. May the Lord bless these rings which you give to each other as a sign of love and fidelity. Amen. You're going to say these words. Okay. Grace. Grace. Receive this ring. Receive this ring. As a sign of my love and fidelity. As a sign of my love and my fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy, and of the Holy Spirit. Is it on? <laughs> Peter. Peter. Receive this ring. Receive this ring. As a sign of my love and fidelity. As a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. My dear friends, how about an applause for this newly married couple? <laughs> Now, we please stand and have the prayer of the faith. We know that Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father to receive our petitions. This is why tonight we are going to receive the, our petitions this way. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church and its leaders, may they experience your love, guidance, and direction. We pray to the Lord. For guidance for those who are called to lead in the world. May they always spread love, work for peace, and protect the vulnerable. We pray to the Lord. For an end to the violence perpetrated by harsh words, deadly weapons, or cold indifference. May our homes, our nation, and our countries around the world become havens for peace. We pray to the Lord. For those who are sick, lonely, discouraged, or oppressed, that they may be strengthened by God's help and aided by their friends. We pray to the Lord. For Grace and Peter, who begin their new life together on this very special day, may their home be filled with laughter and happiness 
and may the Lord bless them and keep them safe. We praise the Lord. For the relatives and friends of Grace and Peter and all of those who share this important milestone in their lives, that they may enjoy perfect happiness and reach their total fulfillment in eternal life. We pray to the Lord. For those who have gone before us, who would have loved to share in the joy and happiness of this day, but are spiritually present, especially Grace's Wanga, Betty Paleo, and Peter's Mammy, Nancy Cunningham. We pray to the Lord. We have uh, so many intentions in our hearts. We will place them on this altar during this Mass. And now, Eternal Father, you know our needs. We present them to you through the intercession of the Mother of your Son as we sing the Ave Maria. <laughs> be seated for the offertory of the Mass. May I ask those who are bringing the gifts, please, to come forward.
My sisters, my brothers, let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his church. As we celebrate anew the memory of St. Matthew, we bring uh, you sacrifices and prayers, O Lord, humbly imploring you to look kindly on your church and especially on Grace and Peter, whose faith you have nourished by the preaching of the apostles. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for although you have no need of our praise, yet our desire to thank you is itself your gift. Our prayer of thanksgiving adds nothing to your greatness, but makes us grow in your grace through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you. And with joy we proclaim. is the most important part of the Mass. We are going to kneel if we can. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church. Spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Bishop, all the clergy, and the entire people your Son has gained for you. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, especially Saint Matthew, and all the saints who have preached you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you 
through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Stand, please come and one sorry. Following the teachings of our Lord, we are going to use his prayer, the prayer that he taught us to say. Together, we are going to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. My dear sisters, my dear brothers, let us humbly pray to the Lord that on these his servants, now married in Christ, he may mercifully pour out the blessing of his grace and make of one heart in love, in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood, those he has joined by a holy covenant. O oh God, who by your mighty power created all things out of nothing. And when you had set in place the beginnings of the universe, formed man and woman in your own image, making the woman an inseparable helpmate to the man, that they might no longer be two, but one flesh, and taught that you were pleased to make one must never be divided. May the grace of love and peace abide in your daughter Grace. Let her always follow the example of those holy women whose praises are sung in the Scriptures. May her husband entrust his heart to her, so that acknowledging her as his equal and his joint heir to the life of Grace, he may show her due honor and cherish her always with the love that Christ has for his Church. And now, Lord, we implore you May these, your servants, hold fast to the faith and keep your commandments. Made one in the flesh, may they be blameless in all they do. And with the strength that comes from the gospel, may they be bear witnessing to Christ before all. May they be blessed with children and prove themselves virtuous parents who live to see their children's children and grant that reaching at last together the fullness of years for which they hope they may come to the life of the blessed in the kingdom of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace. For the peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life.
life. The blood of Christ, take it with your hand. The blood of Christ. Now we have John who's going to help us with the communion. Those who would wish to receive, please come forward. Please stand. And let us pray. Sharing in that saving joy, O Lord, with which St. Matthew welcomed the Savior as a guest in his home, we pray. Grant uh, that Peter and Grace and all of us may always be renewed by the food that we receive from Christ, who came to call not the just, but also sinners to salvation, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And now I, I have... A
to give a special blessing because uh, I just happened to be in a place called uh, Rome, I guess. And uh, I, I was meetings with this wonderful man. His name was Pope Francis, I guess. And uh, he gave me something special for this uh, conclusion of the celebration. I would like you to stand here. May God, the Eternal Father, keep you of one heart in love for one another so that the peace of Christ may dwell in you and abide always in your home. Now I'm asking all of you, and let me hear it too. There is one word, which it's an Aramaic word, but it means so much. That word is amen. How about saying amen means that you agree with what the, I'm asking the blessing from the Lord, okay? Together, we are going to say, Amen. May you be blessed in your children, have solace in your friends, and enjoy true peace with everyone. May you be witnesses in the world to God's charity, so that the afflicted and the needy who have known your kindness may one day receive you thankfully into the eternal dwelling of God. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain forever. Amen. Now I have a special uh, task that I have received uh, from uh, the Holy Father. This is his coat of arms. So this is a special grocery. You better keep it and pray. Okay. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Great. And this is for you. Too. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. How about a great applause? Now they are going to begin their... <laughs> we are going to start. Okay, you may, you may start the procession into the world.
That's why I'm going to read my speech, <laughs> word for word, to help me get through this. Talking about my little girl, who's come to this day is very emotional for me, and I will need all the help I can get. So here it goes, Grace and Peter, from the bottom of my heart. I would first like to introduce myself. For those of you who don't know who I am, I'm David, Grace's dad. <laughs> Along with my wife, Janet, welcome all of you tonight to the Gramercy Park Hotel under the stars and bright city lights. We also want to welcome Faith and Peter, Peter's parents, along with all the Rashino family and everyone else who has come to celebrate Grace and Peter's big day. Peter, thank God you took that second walk with me on the beach. <laughs> and I'm gonna throw in a couple little things and I'll come back to it. They, they, off the paper, non-scripted, they tempted, uh, my wife says to me last year, I think Peter's gonna ask for Grace's hand. I says, really? So, yeah, and I think he's gonna do it up at the vineyard. I said, okay. So we're down there, he's my fishing buddy, by the way, and he says, you wanna go for a walk? I figured, yeah, no problem. So we go for a walk for like an hour, I come back, and my wife goes, so? I said, Jan, he didn't ask me anything. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow. We took that second walk back to the speech, and uh, obviously he asked my permission to marry Grace, and I said to him, it took you six years, what took you so long? <laughs> I couldn't be happier with the respect you've shown me, but I told you, you would need the approval of DJ Lucas and Jake, Grace's brothers. Just kidding. <laughs> now, it's traditional for me to say a few things about the bride, so Grace, please don't worry. I promised your mother I wouldn't embarrass you with my speech. <laughs> I would like to say how proud I am of you today, how good I felt giving you away. You look beautiful. For me, the key to being a good dad is giving unconditional love, advice, support, and encouraging you in everything you do and believing in you. But most of all, important, being there for you, never letting you down, and never disappointing you. Grace. For everyone who knows you, you will agree. You are kind, caring, and bubbly, full of love. So today seems like the perfect occasion in front of your family and friends for your mother and I to say how much we love you. There's more. <laughs> it's normal now at this time for me to welcome Peter to the family. Janet and I have always treated you like one of the family. We liked you from the first moment we met you. It was obvious that you adored Grace. Over the years, our instincts have been proven to be correct, and we look at you as a son more than a son-in-law. So remember, if you ever need our help, Peter, or support, we will always be there for you, as well as Grace. Everyone can see the love you have for Grace. You have a sense of humor, along with the caring and sensitive side, too. Also, I know meeting, meeting Grace has made your life complete. Short pause, it says, my daughter. <laughs> she says, you gotta get a couple of laughs. 
<laughs> Listen. Now I would go into the Bobby De Niro and he analyzed this and all that. But I may lose half years and I don't know what the hell he was talking about. So I'm going to stick to the script. Now, Peter, I know Grace. She'll mold you into the perfect husband. You're, you're a modern guy. Also likes equality as much as I do. But remember this. Doing housework can be enjoyable. So, Grace and Peter... True love isn't about looking at life through rose-tinted glasses and always being perfect. It's about respecting one another. We all have faults, so loving someone who they are and not for who you want them to be. So always be positive and remember that you fell in love with each other because of the things you liked, not the things you didn't like. Neither of you will ever be perfect, but you can be a perfect match for each other. A successful marriage is not about finding a person you can live with, but a person you can't live without. And I know that you two have found each other. Now, I am by far no expert on marriage. Trust me. But I would like to share a bit of advice with you. If for some reason you ever have a falling out, never go to bed angry. Do like your mother and I do. Stay up all night and fight. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> quiet down, quiet down. And while you will always have each other, remember, you will always have your friends and your family to count on. I think that this is the time for my end of my speech, and now it's time for a toast. So everyone, please raise your glasses with me with the few words that I'm sure you have all heard before. So here's for the past for all that you have learned. Here's to the present, for all that you share. And here's to the future of hope and dreams, love and happiness, and then all that you look forward to together. Let the journey begin. Salute. Thank you very much. <laughs> Um, I'm going to start off the speeches with a little toast to two of my most favorite people in the entire world. <laughs> Not expected, okay. You are the most special couple I've ever met, and Grace is my oldest friend, my cousin, my the person I trust the most. <laughs> the second I met Peter, I started calling him my cousin because I knew they'd end up together. And then as soon as they started planning their wedding, I started saying my cousins were getting married together and it was very awkward. So there were a lot of explanations, but I unconditionally love you both so much and I feel so honored to be part of your life. And um, cheers to forever with you guys. I love you so much. <laughs> Okay, when I was talking about Peter, so about three, four years ago, 4th of July, we, fireworks went off, I have two dogs, we, we lost Lily, right? So Janet's hysterical, calls Grace up down the shore, Peter and Grace are down the shore by his parents, and she says, uh, they lost the dog, I have to go home, we have to go home. And who else would say, yeah, 4th of July, let's go home and look for a dog. That night, 9.30 at night, he's in the driveway with two flashlights with batteries. They looked for the dog till 4 in the morning. When I said, this is unbelievable. I gave up, went inside, went to bed. And the, uh, the good thing is, is Lily under her own steam came up the driveway that morning. Tail between her legs, but uh, I meant to say that before. That's the kind of guy this guy is. So... I listen. I know I wouldn't do it. Thank you very much. All right, everybody. Is that the angle we're going to go for? Okay. Um, and can we actually just give a special round of applause to the parents, too? Um, both Mr. and Mrs. Paleo and Mr. and Mr. Uh, Mr. And Mrs. Rochino. Um, and everybody, and most importantly, um, Peter and Grace. Um, what a special day, and I think I speak for everyone when we say that we are so grateful just to get to be a part of it with you. Um, for those of you I haven't had the chance to meet yet, my name is John McCarthy, and I am Peter's uh, best man. Hold for applause. 
Um, Peter, I can't tell you how much this honor means to me. First off, you're the best friend a guy could ask for, um, and you're really more like a brother. Um, but you also know me so well. This role includes so many of my favorite things, including a speaking part, uh, easy access to the VIPs, and getting to go around the room telling people that I'm the best at something. So um, it's uh, a perfect fit, and I couldn't be more grateful. Um, but let's also be honest, you know that I typically don't drink before I speak, so it was a surefire way to make sure that I wasn't overserved too early in the evening. Um, now, I will say, when you asked me to do this, um, I've been thinking about the speech ever since, because like your relationship and the both of you, I wanted it to be perfect. Um, so I started putting pen to paper and said that I would prepare some deep and profound uh, reflections on love and marriage. However, um, I have no area of expertise to speak on this. Um, so I just kind of said, let's aim for the basics, uh, reflect on the groom, reflect on the bride, tie it all together. So here we go. Um, Peter, I distinctly remember meeting you at Catholic University uh, in the back of J.K. White's politics class. Um, all the stars were there, Gina McLaughlin, Liz Murray, just about everyone else. Um, and along the way, picked up so many great friends at that school, like Caitlin and Matt, um, both Matts, Dennis and Alicia, um, and so many from that kind of little political orbit that just kind of kicked off our, well, I, I was saying from the political class, um, from our grade. Um, but from that very moment, our group of friends was formed, and it's been a great ride ever since. We've had a lot of highs. We ran for student government together. We did college Republicans and college Democrats, Saga and SFAB. There were way too many nights at Hawk and Dove and Times and lots of sing-alongs with Papa George, lots of pizza bolis, generously sponsored by Liz Murray's credit card. Um, our daytime debut on Fox and Friends. Uh, our signature half-birthday full Christmas parties, which I've crowdsourced with most of our friends, and there's no family-friendly way to describe the debauchery of those parties. Um, and by senior year, we even had the good sense uh, to coordinate all of our class schedules so that we could take Tuesday and Thursday afternoons to sit and watch Law and & Order SVU. And let's just say, by the end of those eight hours and eight episodes, we were very tired from fighting crime. Um, and a lot of weekends spent in Westchester, Keensburg, Lusby, um, and lots of friends' houses along the way. Um, we even have had some lows. Uh, like driving a tractor from New York City to Washington for our first uh, post-college apartment and the small hit and run we had in an Ikea parking lot. Um, I would tell you more of that story, but on the advice of counsel, I cannot. Um, but I will say, um, through all the highs and the lows, the last 10 years, there has really been a constant, um, which has always been your deep commitment to friends, um, your honesty, and at your core, your integrity. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Rochino, I know that you already know this, but you've raised a great son. And Jen, you have helped form a great brother. Um, all of our friends are incredibly grateful for him, and our lives are enriched by him and them. Um, he's someone that you can call when you're in a pinch, who will drop everything to be there for uh, someone he cares about. And this is totally a reflection of your family. Um, Grace, I've also had the good fortune of getting to know your family over the last few years, and your great brothers through the bachelor party. Um, <laughs> The whole family is smart, funny, original, and they happen to be great cooks. Um, so Peter, I will say you've lucked out. Um, Grace, I can also say, without hesitation, from the moment you and Peter met, you have found new ways to bring out the best qualities in him. Um, since the two of you have started dating, he has only improved. He's now suddenly adventurous with his taste, food, uh, his taste in foods. Who would have thought we'd see Peter eating sushi? Um, <laughs> since you've started dating him, he is slightly more relaxed. Um, and since you've started dating, he no longer thinks that track pants and a baggy hoodie is an acceptable way to leave the house. Um, so I'd say on behalf of all of us and perhaps a grateful nation, thank you. Um, but let me say that these are also the easy things to notice. Um, the less evident things are the most important. In getting to spend time around you in the time that you've been together, um, a few things have become more evident. He smiles a lot more, he's even more thoughtful, and Peter, who, let's be honest, always loves Peter, um, has almost completely changed the way that he'll start sentences from just me to me and Grace. Um, you two have become the definition of a unit and a team. So uh, to quote one of Peter's favorites, and you know that I love you because I would never quote a Republican otherwise, but John Boehner said, um, if you do the right things for the right reasons, the right things will happen. Um, both of you are so characterized by doing the right things with such good intentions um, and it's clear that the right thing has happened. Um, they always have that old adage that when you know, you know. And I can say that from the moment that you two met, you knew, and so did all of us. Um, so here's to Peter and Grace, um, two of the very best. I love you both. Hi, hi, hi. First off, thank you so much to the Paleo and Rashino families 
for bringing us together with such an amazing reason to celebrate. For those of you I haven't had the chance to meet, my name is Hannah Feidelberg, and I've been so lucky to call Grace my friend for over 10 years. Grace and I went to college together. We were roommates in Washington, D.C., on Martha's Vineyard, and in Stamford, Connecticut. And I've also had the pleasure of working with Grace since we graduated, which is lucky for me because Grace is one of the best people to have by your side in all instances. Grace has this amazing way about her that's calm and clear. You always know Grace will be the first person to help in any situation. She listens and she's loyal. She lights up a room and she isn't afraid to get her hands dirty. She's a worker, she's funny, and she doesn't take things too seriously, but she's always able to get the job done. A few years back, I was moving, and of course, Grace and Peter were two of the first to offer to help on the big day. I went to return the U-Haul, and I got back to my apartment. The two of them were building a bookshelf, setting up my closet, and getting things organized. A few weeks after the move, I was packing for a beach vacation and realized I misplaced all of my bathing suits. I mentioned it to Grace at work the next day, and she quickly answered that they were in my bottom drawer on the left. <laughs> she was right. When Grace asked me to be her maid of honor, I was thrilled, and shortly thereafter, I started thinking about a speech. I immediately thought of the perfect story to share. The only problem was that it required that I find a journal from college. I knew Grace would be able to tell me exactly where it was, but I couldn't ask her. It took a few days, but I was able to dig it up. Grace and I shared a room our senior year of college. To set the scene, we each had a twin-size bed, and if we reached our arms out, we could hold hands. It was pretty cozy. So one night, Grace and I were up chatting about what we wanted our husbands to be like, a classic conversation for 20-year-old girls. We made a list of non-negotiables, nice-to-haves, and vain, but still worth writing down in a journal that lives on 10 years later. Grace's list went a little like this. <laughs> funny and thinks I'm funny. Not like, haha, I'm a comedian, but he should have a sense of humor. These are also quotes. Driven, I don't care if it's to be the president or a trash man, but he has to have drive. Honest, will put me first, but not because I ask him to. Taller than me, but I'm not saying he has to be a giant. <laughs> will surprise me with presents. For example, look, I found this leaf and it reminded me of you or jewelry. <laughs> Likes outdoorsy things, but wants to live in the city. For example, doesn't want to live in Alaska, but he would like to visit Alaska. <laughs> I'm not sure if Grace was describing Peter or if Peter really is just who Grace is meant to be with, but he hits the nail on the head for all of the things Grace wished for in a man 10 years back. Peter has been such a great addition to Grace, the Paleo family, and our group of friends. Peter's funny, he tells a great story, and it's so obvious how much he loves Grace. I love to watch Grace and Peter together because they have this balance of an old married couple and two people still learning and laughing about one another every day. They make one another better, they challenge each other, and they respect one another's differences. Grace and Peter, I wish you wonderful things in your future, a lifetime of laughs and love surrounded by friends and family. So everyone, please raise your glass for a toast to Grace and Peter.